Hey, welcome to our podcast, Figuring It Out Together. We're a group of young women here to give us and other young people a voice. So let's get real and talk about issues like mental health, body image, relationships and life experiences. To talk and advocate on issues that not only affect us now, but in the future. Hey, welcome back to Figuring It Out Together. I'm Sienna and in today's episode, we'll be talking about self-love and self-care. Joining me, we have Anna, Leanne and Abia. So to start us off, what is self-love and what does it mean to you? Abia, what do you think? Um, in my opinion, I would say self-love is basically self-acceptance, you know, just um, appreciating yourself for who you are and like your just the little things about yourself and um, not letting what someone else says to you, like, you know, get into your head. Yeah, I think you define that perfectly, Abia. Uh, self-love is really about accepting yourself and making sure that uh, you're being really loving to yourself and really giving yourself the affection that it deserves. Yeah, Abia, your definition for self-love was like perfect. Having that confidence in yourself and not worrying about what others think about you and having to change for what they think is like the normal. And you just being able to reflect on your emotions and validating that it's okay and you're fine. It's creating a happiness in yourself. Yeah, and I think self-love isn't something that just like that everyone's like born with. Like it's a journey, like, you know, it's kind of like you figure it out yourself as you go older and you um, have all these experiences and you will come like these challenges and then you just get to know more about yourself and your own like capabilities. It's yeah, self-love is something you don't you don't realize you need it until it occurs. It's something that you go, oh, what is you don't really understand what the meaning of self-love is. It can take you some time and that path to it, you may go down multiple paths before you get there and you may realize, oh, I just had to do this. I needed a break from everyone else. And it takes time. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah I think that like, like Abia was saying, it definitely is a journey and I don't think that it's like it's an ever-changing one. Like you never know like where you're going to go and when things are going to go south or when they're going to get better. Um, and I think like, even just in terms of like when we're born, I don't think that we're born without self-love. I think it's just like everything around us that continues to tamper with it or change it, like society and expectations and things like that. So as we grow older, it becomes more difficult to accept ourselves and love ourselves, but it is an everlasting journey. Yeah, like Sienna said, I think especially when we're really young, we, we're we really creative and um, we're really um, inspired and we want to do so many things and we want to be so many things. But then you realise as you grow older, that kind of logical side of you hits and with the addition of like societal pressure or peer pressure, I think we, we almost become more confer- conservative or more conformative to society. Like I still remember when I was younger, I used to want to be a doctor or an astronaut or like an artist. And now I think because of society or because of the peer pressure we face as young children and youth, we feel like we can't reach as high as we should be. Yeah, like we become more realistic rather than like idealistic. Yeah. The right word. And I think that in itself, like we put our own self-love Bef- um, l- like lower in what we should prioritize because we're so, so busy worrying about everything else, which is like really crazy. But because of life and and work and things like that and school and like staying busy, we don't even think for a second to just like stop and care about ourselves, which should be the most important thing. Yeah, you can occupy yourself to such a limit. And then it'll just one day come crashing down. Yeah, so on that, when did you guys realise that self-love was a thing? Unfortunately for me, that was only like pretty much last year. Like I think I hit a point in my life where I realised that, okay, this is rock bottom. You're actually burning out. Like you need to start taking care of yourself. And I think... It's really sad, but it took me um, 
to reach a low point in my life, like the lowest point, rock bottom, to realize that I need to start prioritizing self-love before anything else. But yeah, it's all a journey and I'm, I don't feel rushed and I don't think there is any rush to get it right the first try. So yeah, it's a journey and I'm still on it. Yeah, and like, see, that's really good. And like Sienna said, it's all the in, like exterior like factors that affect your like self-love because it took me like the end of year nine to realize all this pressure I'm putting myself for schoolwork and these friendships are just not working. It's really like I've changed myself for those friendships and like put such high expectations where I haven't actually learned anything on my schoolwork to be like, I like got to a point where I was like, I just want to, I, I need to get out of this country. <laughs> like I need to leave the whole country as a whole. I need to get away from everyone. And I did. I went on my little holiday and I <laughs> left. And when I went away, I just felt like I didn't have to worry about what others thought about me. I was in a whole different country. I just was relaxed and I accepted my differences in my hair and my, like my confidence came back in myself and who I am. And it takes time. And I feel like I'm still growing. And you can be set back quite a lot in different times and you go, whoa, I was doing so well and now I'm a step back again. Why is this happening? Like I thought I was fine. Mm -hmm. So it's like you said, it's a growing situation. Abia? Yeah, I think like what you said that you like, you know, it's it's changing basically. It's dynamic. Like there are going to be days where you're like at your peak and you just, you know, you're just really like loving yourself. But then there might be other times where you're like doubting yourself. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think also like with realising what that self-care even is a thing, I think you don't even realise it until like you've put yourself through so much. In like past experience, I think that you don't truly see how much you're changing yourself for someone or for a certain situation until you're out of it. And then it, it takes and it's going to take a long time to put yourself back together. And that is what self-love is. It's like recognizing that you've lost yourself because of this and you need to start working. And that's when like self-care comes into play. And you have to like, I mean, even just acknowledging that you're not yourself anymore is a step in the whole process of loving yourself, um, which can be really hard to come to at first. Not just like self love, like in the self love, but it's people. For people, it's easier for them to be self deprecating than being like uh, working on what their issue is. It's easier for them to be like, oh, I'm just horrible at this. I can't do anything. Instead of going, hey, why, why, can't, what just happened? How do I fix that? How do I find the self love in my like? How do I find it in myself to be like, it's okay. We'll figure it out. This is just a minor setback. We'll go forward in it. It's not just my issue. This could happen to anyone. And I, you're totally right in that point where you said um, we don't want to work in ourselves because I think one of the hardest steps to take is the very first one where we realise we need to um, prioritise ourselves and our own well-being over others. And I think a lot of the time we don't make that first step because we know the amount of work we have to put into it and the amount of effort it takes to reach a good point. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, so what are some ways where we can, like, prioritise our, you know, like, ourselves, essentially, or, like, some self-care methods? Um, I think, like, I think it differs for every person because it's, I, I think it's really about just doing things that make you happy. And so, like, for some people that might be, like, listening to music or, like, painting or reading, writing, something like that. But um, I think it's important to do something that you're doing just for yourself because, you know, you can, like, say, like, oh, I'm just going to take time to myself and then go and, like, spend three hours on, like, social media and then it's not even doing anything that's, like, actually positively affecting you. You're just going back into old habits. So I think when we talk about self-care, we should be doing something that we know is 100% for ourselves and is 100% going to positively benefit us. Yeah, and taking that time as well because, like we said, we can occupy ourselves to such a limit before having to actually think about what's going on and that can be scary. And things like just going on a walk by yourself or 
while you're on that walk, call someone you know who you can just rant, like rant about everything to, and they'll just listen. Like that can help just getting it all off your chest. Yeah, and even I found I'm actually a I'm, I'm a huge workaholic, so it, I used to think that any time I did not spend on working or studying or doing schoolwork was wasted time. Yeah. So I found that for those who for those in the audience who almost feel the same way, I found that um, just before I go to bed, just like a couple of minutes, maybe just like wash my face, like use a couple of skincare products, really take care of my skin or put on a face mask, just something to make sure that how little or as long as you want, but as long as you're doing something in the day um, to acknowledge yourself and to acknowledge that you are practicing self-love and self-care. Yeah, and honestly, just doing like something as little as just, you know, washing your face, like taking care of your skin, like just these tiny things can make a big impact if you do it consistently you know i think with self-care it's just it's important that you need to like be consistent with it yeah there's so many calming things you can do you can paint you can honestly if you need to organize yourself and you feel like you're hectic just go clean your room or something because that's something you do have control over and you don't feel like you're losing control over everything because that's something you can fix in the moment I was literally just going to say that, like, just cleaning your room can be um, an example of, like, self-care. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's, like, little habits that help you on, like, your journey to really caring and loving yourself, like making your bed every morning or, you know, like a skincare routine, things like that really help. Um, you get into just and it just becomes things that you do daily like you don't even think about it like and that's what will help because caring about yourself and loving yourself shouldn't shouldn't be this big task it should be something that's just part of your everyday yeah and I've seen on like TikTok and stuff where they like say these oh my gosh mantras mantras (laughs) mantras yeah yeah to yourself in the morning where you go like I'm beautiful I'm amazing and honestly if you keep saying that to yourself, it does work. Like you don't need anyone else's approval. You dress up and you go, I look good. I look amazing. And you don't need anyone else's approval and you just feel happy. Yeah, I started doing that too. It sounds dumb, like the first couple of times. But after a while, you just get used to saying it. And I think it, yeah. like even though it may not, you might not see like a physical change, I'm pretty, like I think at least that my mentality has definitely changed as a result of saying these things. Yeah, it makes you feel so much better. Like when I go yeah. out and I'm all dressed up, I go, damn, I look good. Because <laughs> nobody is a yeah. hype woman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If no one's going to be there to hype me up, I will myself. <laughs> exactly. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have confidence in yourself, you can't expect anybody else to have exactly. confidence in you. Like, yeah. And I, I feel like we should also recognise that you know saying that you need to do stuff like this it's not going to be easy to start because sure. I feel like you know you can go on social media or not even just like listen to podcasts or you know read books about self-love and self-care and have it in your mind constantly but it's not going to be it's not going to like it's not something that's going to happen overnight like it will take time because like we said before recognizing that this is something you need to work on is the hardest step that you'll ever have to take. So I think a lot of people, like, as soon as they realise that this isn't, you know, this is something that is a problem and they need to work on it, they go the complete opposite way and they just, like, use everything else to ignore it. And and it's really hard. So, yeah, I think we should just recognise that it's going to take time because um, that first step is always going to be the hardest. Yeah, it takes a lot of, like, it takes courage and strength to take it and it's great in the moment it's going to be real tough and you're going to be like I could just go on with my life ignoring the situation not very well in the like mentally but just bottling it all up but then again you're going to come to a point where it just comes crashing down and it's going to be even worse to get step back up you don't want to reach that point you'd rather start earlier um than when you're going to reach a breaking point yeah. yeah, and it even it might even be that breaking point that helps you wake up and realize, mm. um, 
but yeah, I, I it's hard, I think, for, for everyone and it's different for everyone. Like people, they're, they're going to approach it differently. Like you can start doing those little habits like going for a walk or listening to more music and spending more time on yourself, but it's a long journey and it's not something that's going to happen overnight. So what are like three things you guys like to like either say to yourself or do to just pep yourself up a bit in your self-confidence and self-love? Leanne? I think in the mornings, I always like to start the day off itself with a positive affirmation of like, hey, you did a great job last night. Or like, you got so much work done yesterday. Or you were so productive. We're going to be so productive today. Just something, especially I I strongly believe that if you're going to do something good, I mean, if you're going to do something, do it properly. Um, so I'd rather do it in the morning where I'm just fresh out of bed um, and just start the day off with some positive affirmations because as cheesy as it sounds, it sets the tone for the rest of the day. And if you're going through the rest of the day with a positive attitude and yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're setting up, you're not, you're setting up your, like you're setting yourself up for not failure, but a successful day. Yeah, exactly. Abia? Um, For me, I... So, yeah, I think what Leanne was saying, like, the way you start your day really does impact how the rest of your day goes. Um, For me, I like to, like, start it with just, like, prayer and praying is, like, an important thing for me personally. And sometimes even just little things, like, I've gotten into the habit, like, as soon as I get up, I just drink, like, three big glasses of water. And honestly, just something like that can, you know, like, start you off on, like, a productive day. I need to start doing that. I don't drink enough water. <laughs> Sienna? Um, yeah, I think like kind of like both of you, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do really sets the tone for your day. And I um, have got into the habit of making my bed every morning, which I never used to do. But and it, I don't, I mean, I don't even know if it's like true, but you hear all the time, like that's something you should do every, every morning. And I do. And it, Helps a lot because even like when I go home from school, like at least my room is clean. Like it's just like one less thing. So yeah, stuff like that. What about you, Anna? I like to like, I feel like working out and like fitness gives me a moment to take a break because I don't feel like I'm, like Leanne said, anytime that I'm not doing something where I could be doing work, I feel like is a waste of time. So when I'm still achieving something like going on a three kilometer walk, or doing a little dance workout. I feel like I've achieved something in that time. And I've also left, let myself can't like be in a calm, allowed to think about my thoughts and everything. What Sienna said about making the bed, I regret to admit it, but I struggle with that so much, especially like winter mornings, it's too cold. And I've got the electric blanket on. I just can't be bothered getting out of bed. And when I do, I just don't want to look back at it because I know if I look back at it, I'm just going to jump back into bed. So I leave it there and then I come back from school and it looks like a mess. And it's you it's such a small thing, but it really um, shapes your view because as soon as I come home, I feel really unproductive because my room's a mess. And I know that I'm going to spend time cleaning that. And then by the time I finish cleaning, it's already time to go to bed. Like, So I think even the smallest thing of making the bed can be such a big thing. And I'm still working on it, but... It makes a difference. Yeah, and I notice things like on like days or weeks that are particularly harder than others, it's something that I don't even think about. Like I just leave my bed and my room mm. complete a complete mess. Like and, and it shows like when I'm doing better and when I'm having a great day, like I'll take the time to just make my bed and like, you know, have my room decently clean. But, you know, when things get hard, I just completely like I don't even think about it. And, and it shows, like, you know, the first step of, like, making your day just that little bit better is the first thing you do in the morning. You create a positive space. I can't exactly um, – I don't know who exactly it's from, but I remember one of my mentors gave me a quote that said – and they said, um, your room is kind of a physical picture of your brain. So if it's really messy, you can tell that um, you're clearly going through something up in here 
And if it's clean, you've kind of got it together and you're somewhat organized. So I found that if I clean my room, at least in some sense, my head will be clear and I can think properly. That is, yeah, that's 100% true. Yeah, because I don't know about you guys, but I work better in a clear space. Like I can't work in a messy area. I just, that does not comprehend in my ment- mental spot. <laughs> and yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be your room. It could be like just your desk, honestly. Yeah. Like space. It could so, be anything, like when you're cooking and yeah. like you yeah. while you cook, you put things away so you just don't have a mess yeah, everywhere. Exactly. It doesn't have to just be like your bed or your room. It could just be like the kitchen or like the bathroom or just something like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, or not even like a physical space, like just organizing your homework, like keeping a planner or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or like writing it on like a, a note on your computer or something, just like just so everything is organized and you're not constantly stressed and you feel like – you're everywhere and and like doing things like that it's one making things easier for yourself and it is caring like it's caring for yourself it's part of self-care yeah and that's you just made a great point Sienna it's I think it's really important to understand that um there's no such thing as like there aren't self-care rules or there aren't like instructions on how to achieve self-care or self-love it's just um you do your own thing like you do you because um, everybody's self-care journey and self-love journey is totally different from each other's and what may work for me might not work for another person and that's totally fine it doesn't have to there aren't a certain set of um, conventional methods or tips and tricks that are going to like help you achieve self-love or self-care in the fastest possible way yeah exactly but there are like places where you can go to like find some ideas like beyond blue yeah and project love These websites can just help you find, like, they give you ideas of what you could possibly do, as well as Pinterest. That can, like, give you arts and craft to let yourself calm down and just get something, achieve a little project. Yeah, just, like, small things, but not even, just, like, things to start you off, you know, because everyone needs, like, you know, it's it's not like we've been saying, it's not easy. So they're just things to help you out um, and to start you off. Sometimes even just like watching a show, you know, could just yeah, lift your mood up. Yeah, like having a comfort show or like a comfort like book or or like an album or something like that. You know, just surrounding yourself with things that make you happy. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um we hope that you start your self-care journey and can take some of these tips with you. Um but thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you on our next episode. Thanks for listening. Hope we inspired you. Can't wait for the next one. This podcast is proudly supported by Baseline for Young People and the City of Whittlesea.